This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. All right, let's fire in. I am your host, Gary Seegers. This is Winning Cures Everything. Daily 15-minute show, sometimes 10, sometimes 20. It just depends. But daily short show discussing whatever topics I feel like discussing in the world of sports that day. Today is Monday, February 25th. Here is the rundown for the show. Uh, we're going to talk about Arizona's Sean Miller and LSU's Will Wade uh, being notified that they are going to be subpoenaed for the next NCAA, uh, well, I guess it's not NCAA, the next college basketball uh, federal trial. Uh, we're going to discuss what all went into that, uh, mainly from the Will Wade side. And we're going to talk about the last teams in and the first four out of the NCAA tournament. We do this every Monday. Uh, and then, of course, I've got college basketball gambling picks. Went 1-3 and three on Sunday. Didn't have any picks on Friday or Saturday. Uh, Sunday was a bad day. Bad day. We hit on Xavier. Missed on the other ones. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Or just go over to winningcureseverything.com, and it's got everything you need over there. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on whatever podcast app you're on. Leave a review. Share the thing out. Leave some comments. We appreciate it. We love the support. Here is the big news of the day, though. We will be at Sam's Town Casino in Tunica, Mississippi, on Thursday, March 21st, and Friday, March 22nd. The first two days of the NCAA tournament, we will be broadcasting live. Going to have two shows a day, one at 10 a.m. before the games start, and then another one for the afternoon segment. We're going to broadcast it live on YouTube. Uh, I think we're going to do Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh, but make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. Go hop on that thing. We will be at Samstown in Tunica on March 21st and March 22nd, starting at 10 a.m. Normally, the sports book opens at 11 we talked with them. They will be opening at 10 a.m. so that people can come in and hang out with us and so that you can make your bets before the tournament kicks off at 11 a.m. So uh, make sure you uh, you figure out all the stuff. We're going to put up a Facebook event about that. Uh, make sure you RSVP to it. Let us know you're going to be there. We want to meet everybody. We're going to be there all day on both days. So from morning to night, but from 11 a.m., well, I guess 10 a.m. when the show starts, until after midnight when the last ball goes in. That is what we're going to be doing all day. We're going to be there gambling with you guys, hanging out, watching the, the games. We're looking forward to it. Now let's jump into topic number one. Arizona Sean Miller and LSU's Will Wade are going to be subpoenaed. They were notified of this. That way it, it doesn't become a spectacle where they're, uh, they're subpoenaed in the middle of a ball game, something like that, right? Yahoo's Pat Forty is the first one that reported it. From the Will Wade side of this, now Sean Miller, everybody has known about this for over a year now. DeAndre Aiden last year, there was a bunch of rumors about him. He was going to be fired. He wasn't going to be fired. Uh, we still don't know what's going on. One of his assistant coaches was fired and was arrested and and put in, in jail. Uh, so Will Wade stated at SEC Media Days last October, or this past October, that he has never, ever done business of any kind with Christian Dawkins. Dawkins is the uh, half-agent slash runner, whatever, for Adidas, the, the whole Jim Gaddis thing. He's an executive at Adidas, or was. Um, he said uh, that he's never done business with Christian Dawkins. Dawkins is who is on trial here. There's another trial coming up. Dawkins is already... Uh, been sentenced, I guess, or whatever you'd like to call it, for the first trial. This second federal trial for Dawkins starts in the next few months. Well, Wade, who said he's never, ever done any business dealings with Dawkins, is expected to show up on wiretaps discussing multiple recruits. Uh, and it includes an exchange about a recruit, and I, I'm going to butcher this name, but we'll try it out anyway, Bossa. Kapravika. Here's the deal. In the last trial, which was after Wade said that he had never had any dealings with him, uh, Dawkins, of course, was on wiretap. Jim Gaddis's attorney 
read a transcript from that. This is how that went down. Dawkins said, would you want Balsa? Wade said, oh, the big kid? Dawkins confirmed it. Wade said, okay, but there's other shit involved in this. Wait, I've got to shut the door. I can get you what you need, but it's got to work. Now, this is from the first case in October, which was after Wade said he had never had any business dealings with Dawkins. This is not a good thing to have happen with Will Wade right in the middle of a historic LSU basketball run right now. Uh, They're in a position after beating Tennessee this past Saturday, which was controversial in and of itself, but they are in a position to win the SEC outright. That, let me say that again. LSU, who hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 2015, is in a position right now to win the SEC regular season conference basketball championship outright. That is correct. No, it's not likely. More likely than not, uh, they are going to end up in a tie. But they could even end up tied for the championship. That's what's nuts. They are having a historic very strange for them run of recruiting success. Uh, yes, they got Ben Simmons back when uh, uh, Jones was the coach, but but what they're doing right now is not normal. They're getting really, really good top five players out of New Jersey, out of you know the Northeast, and they're coming down to Baton Rouge to play for a, a team that hasn't had a whole lot of history here lately. And Will Wade, a coach that – doesn't really have a big name, you know, came from VCU. He all of a sudden has all these top 10 recruiting classes, and this is what happens, right? So you hate to see this happen, but uh, my goodness, you know, at one, props to him, he got the talent in and he knew what to do with it, right? I mean, Will Wade is one of the best coaches in the SEC right now, and it's not even close, not even close. But, uh, but yeah, you, you hate to see this happen because you don't want the, – the one thing you don't want is for your new shiny head coach to be associated with somebody like Sean Miller right now who across the board, it, from every media person, every basketball person, is considered one of the dirtier coaches in the game, right? You don't want that. So I hate to see that for LSU. I don't know that it affects this season, uh, but it, it might in the long run. Uh, I'm curious to see what is going to happen because I don't know that we've ever had an active sitting head coach have to be called to the stand in a federal trial about the school. Like He can completely indict himself to where if he says he didn't do it, that, that could end up being perjury if it's proven that he did. So if he gets up there and just lies and says, no, I never talked to him, but then they have him on wiretap, then he could be in trouble. Well, if you lie about what you talked about, that could also be perjury. That could also mean jail time or whatever. Um, Or if he just admits it, that, yeah, I was talking to him about buying players, then you can end up being fired with cause from the school. Because all of these contracts include clauses like that. That helps protect the school in case you get busted. So this is a, a really interesting case because we, we had a feeling Sean Miller would be, had no idea that Will Wade would be. That was, uh, that was kind of out of left field. But, uh, I mean, props to him for, for doing everything he can to win at, at his new big job. Because, I mean, my goodness, this is, uh, you, you deal with shady people, uh, you're more than likely going to get caught eventually. Uh, let's talk about the last teams in and the first four teams out of the NCAA tournament. We like to talk about the bubble stuff, right? Everybody always talks about the top four seeds and blah, blah, blah. All these teams that are, oh, Tennessee might be a two or they might be a one. Kentucky might be a two or they might be a one. Who cares? What I know is that they are in the tournament, Right? So if they are in the tournament, what else is there to talk about? We want to talk about the teams that might get left out of the tournament. So here is the rundown, and I always go through the ones from uh, Bracket Matrix because they average out all of the different 
bracketology, bracketography, whatever stuff, they average all of that out by seeds and discuss who is going to be the last four out or the first four out in the last 12 teams that are in. So the first four teams that they have out of the NCAA tournament, the first one that they have out is Utah State. They're 21 and 6. They're number 37 in the net ranking, which is the NCAA's ranking. I don't know that I see them being left out if their net ranking is 37, but if you go and look, by the end of, of everything, if everything goes projected the way it's supposed to, they will have 20 wins against Quadrant 3 and Quadrant 4 teams. Right now, as it stands, they've only got five wins against Quad 1 and Quad 2 teams. That may not be good enough. They are 2-3 and three against Quad 1. Or, I'm sorry, they are 1-2, and two, and they are 2-3 and three against Quad 2. So, at even, even less than what I was saying. Uh, next, next one being left out, Butler. They are, uh, they are 15 and 12 right now. They are 49 at the net. 15 and 12. I don't know who's going to cut it. They've been on the slide here lately. Davidson, 19 and 7. Uh, they lost over the weekend. Not a good thing to do. Uh, their net is 67. St. Mary's is 19 and 10. Their net is 39. How it is that high, I have no idea. Uh, 19 and 10 is worse than St. Mary's generally is. Their computer ranking is always high. But even in years where they are, you know, 28 and 4, 28 and 5, whatever, they have been left out because they do not challenge themselves in the non conference. The only quad one win that St. Mary's has right now is an away game at New Mexico State. And that's only because New Mexico State is, I think, number 68 in the net. Uh, not good. Not good. They have uh, they've gotten demolished by other really good teams. I uh, I don't see St. Mary's getting in. All right, so let's talk about the last 12 teams that the bubble has in as far as bracketmatrix.com goes. The last team in, Alabama. They are 16-11, and 11, number 53 at the net. They need some wins in a bad way. They're projected to lose their last four games. They play at South Carolina on Tuesday night, uh, and then after that it's LSU at home, Auburn at home, and then at Arkansas. you got to get at least two of those. Uh, their quad one wins and quad two wins are, are up there because they've got a ton of games against them. They've got the number 28 toughest schedule in the country. So they, they are doing well as far as that goes, but, man, they, uh, they are three and four in their last seven games. Uh, the four losses, all blowouts. The, uh, the three wins, two of them were over Vanderbilt, who is the worst team in the SEC. They have zero SEC wins. And the other one was over Georgia. And Georgia has one SEC win, and that's it. So not good. You got to beat some uh, decent teams if you want to make it in. Uh, number two, Clemson. They are a 12 seed. They are also 16 and 11, and number 43 at the net. Uh, I think they will probably find a way to get in. They need more wins as well. They have not been playing well as of late. Uh, number three is Temple. They are a 12 seed, 20 and seven, number 50 at the net. They have not had a whole lot of opportunities against Quad 1 or Quad 2 teams. Uh, they play at Memphis. They probably need to win that one to be able to get an at-large. Uh, but they play at Memphis this week. Seton Hall, also a 12 seed, 16-11. and 11. They got a big win last week. Uh, they, you know, as a 12 seed, they're number 62 at the net. Uh, I think they're going to be fine. All right, And then the ones that are a little more entrenched that, uh, that are probably going to get in, 11 seed UCF. 11 seed Minnesota, 11 seed Arizona State, who got a big win against Washington, and they needed it because they, in the Pac-12, they have had no real opportunities to get quad one or quad two wins. The Pac-12 is a dumpster fire. Uh, 11 seed Florida also in. They're 16 and 11. They have played their way in with a win at LSU and at Alabama over the last week. Uh, 10 seed NC State, 10 seed Ohio State, 10 seed TCU. And then nine seed Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma has has gotten some good wins. They they played really well early, and then dropped off. And now they've gotten some good wins again. Uh, Oklahoma looks like they are cemented in. Uh, let's jump into the college basketball gambling picks for the day. I've only got three of them. Uh, if there's not plays that you like, don't play them. I mean that's that's the easiest way to go about, right? So I went one and three yesterday. I went three and two last Thursday. 
Uh, three picks today. I've got two to, uh, two sides and one total. Let's jump in. First one, Florida State minus 11.5 at home against Notre Dame. Notre Dame has been awful lately other than a close, surprising game against Virginia. Uh, Florida State has been rolling teams. Yes, they got beat at North Carolina on Saturday. Doesn't matter to me. They had won uh, eight straight before that. They have covered uh, five. There are their last five games as a favorite easily. Easily. I'm talking blowing out teams. Uh, I'm taking Florida State on this one. This game matters more to them than it does to Notre Dame. Uh, next up, Montana, minus seven at home against Northern Colorado. Look, it's only a seven-point spread at home for Montana. Northern Colorado, as a road dog, has not covered a single time this year. They are 0-4. At the same time, Northern Colorado, at home earlier in the season, about a month ago, they got absolutely destroyed by Montana. Uh, Montana. They do not match up well with them. I'm going Montana minus the seven. Uh, Montana beat them by 22 the last time they played. So, And that was at Northern Colorado. This is, of course, at Montana. Uh, look for the Grizzlies to win big tonight. Double-digit win for them. And finally, uh, I'm going under 139.5 for Delaware State and Coppin State. Uh, look, these two teams played to a 64-60 game earlier this season, and this was three weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, I'm going to go with the under 139.5. They played to a 124 game. If you look at the last five games for both teams, uh, the total should be around 132, and it is set at 139 and a half. Uh, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Either way, we will take the gift and go under the 139 and a half on that one. Uh, as always, you can get the picks over at winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks, or just go to winningcureseverything.com, go up in the nav bar, and hit gambling picks there. Or if you're watching on YouTube, look down in the description. We got a link to the gambling picks right there. You can always find them every day, uh, other than when I am out sick, as I was on Friday. Uh, I was told I was exhausted, so I had to take a little break. Um, but I am back. I am raring to go. Let's get some wins. We're going three and zero tonight. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave some comments. Share the show out. We appreciate you guys very much. We love you. We will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.